Hey everybody, in this particular video we're going to have a look at TEC Exoblaster Modem uh, radio stations. So let's jump straight into it by reading the problem. Connect to each radio station and insert Cannot Get Over You by ME2U, which is located in file 300. Cool. At the beginning of each playlist file, without otherwise changing its contents. So if you have a look at one of these playlist files, we have the song and the artist, song, artist, song, artist. So we need to append this to the start of each of these files. Cool. A list of phone numbers uh, for the radio stations is available in file 301. So file 301, we have the, uh, the number we need to dial in order to connect to each of these. Um, so I suppose to start with, let's create an excerpt. And um, let's go ahead and link. Uh, yeah, let's link this exa into the main bus here, where this dial is. So we we need to feed uh, these values into that dial in order to call out to these various uh, hosts. Cool. So we're probably going to create two two exas for this one. We're going to have one to manage handling the. Uh, the transfer, the transferal of these numbers and these values here to our XLA. So we'll do that as well. So we'll have a grab 301 uh, for uh, X and B. And what we're going to do is create a send looper. So we need to loop through these numbers uh, for X A to dial. And I'm going to call it send looper. Send a note basically saying pass each number. And effectively what we're going to do is just copy uh, from the file to this uh, main communications line here. And we're going to have x one pick that up. So uh, we'll create another mark called dial num, which is going to handle dialing the numbers for us. I'm just going to copy from m to x. Uh, how are we going to do this? Because we also need a way of stopping it from... Uh, we need a way of XA knowing when XB is uh, done sending a line. So we're also going to have a flag that XB is going to send uh, to indicate that the line is done. So we're going to have a test X is equal to negative 1. Oops. And if it's not equal to negative 1, so we'll do a false jump. Oops, I need the equals there. We'll do a start. Um, and else we're going to halt here. So let's define uh, our uh, mark called start. And this is where we're going to have our dial. We'll handle this logic in a sec uh, on XB. So we're going to copy uh, from X because we just copied the X value in. Yep. And we're going to pass it into dial. Then what we're going to do is Actually, will this work? Yes, I think this is fine. Yeah, because basically, I'm going to do a, a repeat of 10, because there's 11 digits here, but I don't want to be passing in the next digit unless I know for sure that the next digit exists. So I'm going to do a test on this x value, and I'm only going to send the value when I know that the next value exists. So I'll do a repeat, and I'm going to close this block off and repeat. Uh, rep 10 just means it's going to repeat whatever's in here 10 times. Uh, it just saves us having to type it out multiple times. So we're going to copy the M value into the dial. Um, and that should print the number, I think. Should do. Let's finish off this block here. Um, so now we need to copy the uh, the numbers from into... Uh, sorry, we need to copy the numbers to XA. So uh, we can do that by using our repeat. Again, we'll repeat this 11 times, and we'll end this block. Yep. That should send the numbers in. Which is fine. However, we also want to be able to handle... Because we're going to need to send these values here, so we're going to need to send the name of the song and the name of the artist, so how are we going to do that? Um, 
Okay, for starters, let's store where we're currently located in the x value. So this is storing where we're up to in our 300 block so that we can jump and open up 300. Because the moment we close 301, we're going to lose our position and we're not going to know what number we're up to. So uh, add 11 to x and store the, uh, the seek location in x so we can jump back in whenever we need to. We'll do a drop to drop the file. We'll grab 300. I'm going to start a note here saying pass song name. And then we're going to pass the name and the artist. So we're going to copy FM, copy FM. Yeah. Oh. And then we'll drop. Uh, grab 301 again. So this is just setting our loop up again. And we'll seek back to where we were up to. Then we're going to test to see if we're at the end of the file. If we're not at the end of the file, then we'll do a function jump to uh, send looper. And we also need to handle this end file. Yep, so this is where we're going to put our end file. So we're going to do a copy negative one if we are at the end of the file. And then we're going to do a halt. And this is basically just going to uh, make sure that we handle the leave no trace argument. So at the end of the file, we're going to send the negative one, and this entire block's going to finish uh, when we finished writing this block up here. So this should be all the code we need for XB, I think, because uh, we're going to be passing in the numbers, followed by the song, and then the artist. So we can handle the rest of the logic in XA as we enter each of these little pods. So we'll jump back up here. And now we need to write, basically, a function to traverse... Uh, yeah, to traverse the tree. So we'll call this tr uh, mark traverse. Hmm. Just to make sure we are where we're supposed to be. Yeah. So technically, if we probably dial yeah okay so at this point we're done dialing so now we can traverse so once we've dialed a number uh, let's see if that works so we're getting our number in here okay we've dialed our number and we've connected to the host. Okay, cool, that works. So at this point, we can now follow this path. So we know that when we connect to a host, we can link on 800 and we can uh, navigate to the host that it's on. So let's do that now. So under traverse, we're gonna add uh, link 800, which by default will link to the modem we've opened. And we'll grab 200, because that's the name of the file here. Uh, now we need to come up with a way of adding this text to the top of it. Uh, I am... The way I know how to do this is the way we're probably going to do it. Uh, I know there's probably a more optimal way of doing this, but for the sake of this kind of walkthrough, and because I don't know how to do it the other way yet, uh, we're going to do it this way. So we're going to create a new file and basically append everything to it and then copy everything back. Uh, so we're going to copy m to x just to store these values temporarily and m to t. <coughs> and copy m to t. So this is storing the name of the song and the name of the artist in the x register and the, uh, the test register. So we need to make sure we don't perform any tests. Uh, so then we're going to note uh, switch to local. So we're going to start to use the local storage. Uh, to kind of keep track of an extra variable here, so we're going to switch to local. Um, and we're going to... We we'll call it a scribe, so create a scribe. And our scribe is just going to be a clone of us that we're going to be using to write data out to a file. Um, so we'll call it a REPL writer. And mark writer here. So the writer is going to take, uh, well the writer is going to make a file to start with. 
So when we want to run um, uh, replicate writer, we're going to create a copy of ourself. And that copy is going to create a new file. And we're going to create a, a branch called transcribe. Oh, sorry. Mark transcribe. And this branch transcribe is going to copy the m value into x. So here's where it kind of gets a bit complicated. So we're in local scope now. And we're going to copy the value from m into x. So the idea is that we are going to load in the name of the song and the artist. No. We're going to load in the values from the current file into this transcribe method. So right now we're just going to fill a file with everything that's inside 200 because eventually we're going to overwrite everything in 200 with the contents of this new file. Um, but first we're going to put the new names of the songs in there. So yeah. This makes it sense in my head, I think. <laughs> so we're going to test to see if x is equal to negative 1. And this is just to, to make sure that because we need to again keep track of when we're at the end of the file. And if it's true, we're going to jump to send back, which is another function we're going to create. Uh, mark send. And this is basically just going to toggle uh, this clone to start sending all the data back to um, to us for us to bin and rewrite back into file 200. So send back is basically just going to <coughs> seek to the start of its file and we'll mark another loop we'll copy uh, from f into m I think that makes sense yeah so we're going to start copying back from the file and we're going to test to see if we're at the end of the file yet and if we are then we're going to s gosh we've got, we've got a lot of branches in this but we need to again check mark send done because if we're done, we want to make sure that we we want to make sure that we clear the file we created. Because if we don't, we're going to leave a trace, and then we're going to copy negative one back into M just to indicate to XA that we are happy to start, um, that we're happy with all the data we sent, and then we're going to halt, which will delete the clone, and it will delete the file the clone is holding. Um, and that should leave this x200 this 200 file with all the data in it it needs we've just got to write the rest of the uh, transcribe method up here so send back is done however if we're not sending back we're going to copy from x to f and then we're going to jump back up to transcribe i think transcribe yeah okay it should be all the writer needs to do. Now we need to write the rest of the traverse function that's going to read the contents back in. Um, so the writer's done. Now let's add a note saying send uh, song artist. And this is just going to copy from those temporary variables we had um, from x to m and from t to m. Yep, that works. <clears throat> and then we're going to mark a reader. We're going to copy from the file. We're going to test for an end of file. Oh, this is very, very gross. <laughs> and if false, we're going to jump back up to reader. So it's just reading all the data. Um, and if we are at the end of file, again, we'll write negative one back. We'll add another note, <coughs> rewrite, oh. rewrite file, I'm going to seek backwards to the start, and we'll create another mark called printer, this is going to printing back to the file, I'm going to copy from M to X, I'm going to test to see if X is equal to negative 1, and if that's true, I'm going to jump to exit connection. which we'll have to write in a sec. 
But if not, then we're just going to copy X to F and jump back up to the printer. I think it's nearly done. I think we just need to write this uh, exit connection function now. Holy moly. Uh, and what's exit connection going to do? Exit connection is basically just going to jump back out here. Yeah. Just having a think. Yeah, and then recall dial num, because it's just going to jump back out to the main bus here, and then recall dial num. So first we need to drop the file, because we're in here with holding file 200, so we're going to drop that. Then we're going to link backwards. We're going to shift our mode back to global, because we, we changed to local back up here. Um, then we're going to copy negative 1 into dial, which is going to indicate that we are... Um, Yep, yeah, sorry. Copying negative 1 into dial basically hangs up the connection. When it hangs up the connection, it allows us to redial in a new number. Uh, and then we're going to jump to dial num. This... I think this makes sense. So we should see a jump. Yep, cool. It's dialing, and it's as we, if we jump down, we can see we are... Okay, it's not working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see where we might have had problems. Um, yeah. It's never perfect, is it? Copy X to dial. That's right. We run this 10 times. That makes sense. Traverse. We are going into 800. Then we're going to get 200. We're going to copy the value X and T. And then we're going to swap the mode. Which is fine. We spawn a writer, then we copy X into M, and T into M, which is fine. And we have a reader, which copies F to M, tests here for the end of the file, and then if it's false, we call reader again. We copy negative 1 to M, then we seek backwards. Mark the printer and call exit connection if we need to. Else we jump back to printer. We drop the file, go backwards, change the mode, copy negative one to dial, and then jump back up to dial num to redial re the number. Um, a writer makes a file, a transcriber copies M to X, tests to see if it's negative 1, sends back if that's true, and then jumps back up to transcribe if need be, send back, sees backwards, loops. Ah, okay. We are not jumping back up into our loop here. <coughs> My mistake. I think that should be it. Yes, we didn't jump back and build. Okay, so yeah, so we've got a completed playlist here. Let's see if we get two. We do. I'm just gonna speed this up to see if we get all eight. Yeah, we do. Cool. Let's let these test runs finish. Sorry about that. You get caught up in your own logic and you're like, ah, where am I? But, yeah, this was, this is one of those challenges I actually had a lot of fun on. Um, learned, yeah, <laughs> handling, having, handling writing out to a file probably wasn't the best way of doing this, but, I mean, looking at how other people are doing this, yeah, not particularly good for me, but um, I still had a lot of fun, so I will see you in the next one.